Are you trying to sort out health plans, banking, VPN, and other connectivity for your move abroad? Well, have no fear. We've got you with the Move Abroad Starter Kit. Get yours today at blacksitglobal.com slash resources. That's blacksitglobal.com slash resources. Whatever is on your heart, forget the limitations, just do it because it is so worth it. Close your eyes and imagine living a life you love, unapologetic and unbothered, free from daily microaggressions from Karens and Kens, free from the fear of police brutality and systemic racism. Wouldn't that feel amazing? Now open your eyes. What if I told you that it's possible? Hear inspiring stories and get the actual blueprints from brothers and sisters of the diaspora who are living out their wildest dreams abroad. You've heard the term, now be inspired by the movement. I'm Krishan Wright, and this is Blacksit Global. So I'm excited to have this conversation for this episode of the Blacksit Global podcast because I get to talk to you my friend and personal fitness coach, Coach T, Tamika Gentles, who is from Ontario. And she is going to tell us about her wonderful move abroad. She is currently based in Germany. Welcome to the Black Sick Global podcast, Tamika. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to share my story. I'm excited. <laughs> yes, yes. So this, and we knew met each other before I really knew your story. And as I started to learn your story, it became even more fascinated. It's not only a story of transformation in many ways, but also, you know, being able to hold space and encourage others on their journey. So can you talk a little bit about that? what I'm most passionate about is helping others see that like there's a bigger world to wherever they're living. And I was someone who was from kind of a small town, well, not small town, but small town outside of Toronto, only kind of thought everything started and ended within my radius until I moved abroad. And when I moved abroad and saw the plethora of opportunities out there and the ability to work remotely and the ability to travel the world affordably and all of these things, meeting all these digital nomads and even working for corporate abroad, it started to just really broaden my horizons of like what's possible. And the minute I figured it out and I figured out the formula, I've just now committed to sharing it with as many people that will listen because it really is easier than people think. Wow. So let's talk about a little bit about the the formula and why. Because as I said, you come from Canada. You know, many people are, you know, planning their Blacksit from the U.S. or even have thoughts to move to Canada. So that is one of the other reasons why, you know, your story appealed to me so much is, you know, hearing a different perspective of someone in the diaspora who does not come from the U.S. but also made a journey abroad. For you, you talked about transformation and living big and audacious and encouraging people to do the same. So what was that big transformation for you that really prompted that change? So I had two transformations. One was my first trip abroad, which happened from Toronto to Hong Kong. And that was simply a posting within my organization. And I had always wanted to live abroad, but always thought it was bigger and impossible than I could ever like it was a bit too big an, of, a, of, a, of a journey for me to endeavor. But once it was kind of through my corporation, I started to realize, okay, this is very possible. They will support me. They will move me. They will help me with all of the visa stuff. So that was the first transformation, just working in a company that was international, interacting with people internationally in Asia and realizing how the work I do here is, if not like more valued over in Asia because our skill set is so valued abroad, much like the U S and Canada, we are systemic systemically like held down as a culture. So knowing that my Western knowledge and expertise would be really valued in Asia and I would have upward mobility and I wouldn't be kind of limited by this glass ceiling. I was really intrigued. So that was transformation number one. Then when I got to Asia, I was working for a corporation. Like I said, they moved me. I was working there for three, four years. And I started meeting people who were digital nomads. And that was transformation number two, where I was like, you mean you can work 
for yourself, travel the world, have this level of flexibility and freedom, make unlimited money. Because even though I was in Asia and under the, I was still under the corporate umbrella of five, seven percent increase per year and just not being able to live within my excellence. So when I started to go abroad and see what people were doing and how they're making money for themselves in the digital nomadic entrepreneurial sphere, that was transformation number two. That's when I was like, okay, there is no limit. And that's what really got me to where I am today as a digital nomad working remotely for myself. I've always had passions. I've always had side hustles. But when I got to Asia through my corporation, it really broadened my perspective of what I could do with my talents. And that's powerful because you were in human resource management, and now you are in more of the health and wellness space. So when you met all of these digital nomads, did you think that the health and wellness angle was going to be your opportunity? Or were you thinking more of, hey, I can take my talents as an HR professional and maybe be a consultant and do that? So what what prompted you to you know, make that big pivot? <laughs> so I had always had a passion for health and wellness. I personally had lost 90 pounds. Say what now? <laughs> yeah, I had personally lost 90 pounds years before I made the transition. But it was my passion. I thought back to myself. When I think back to that, that self, I was always, even during work, I was always just scrolling on health and wellness websites, learning, educating, taking courses. It was, it was what made me excited. So yes, I could have been an HR consultant and been very successful, but I was just listening to my heart's whisper. My heart wanted to go and pursue this. So when I got abroad to Asia and I was traveling to certain countries, so I was there in Hong Kong as a corporate employee, but I would travel to Bali and these kind of hubs often just on weekend getaways from Hong Kong. And I started meeting these coaches and these people who were doing courses and and all of these people who were making money online. I was like, tell me more. And a lot of them were in the health and wellness space. So it kind of triggered this, this thing inside of me. I had been training part-time online for a while. I'd always loved health and wellness, but to think that I could really make a full-time living and build a business out of this, that was when the transformation happened, when I started meeting people who were actually doing it. Wow. And then, yeah, learning the concept of digital nomads, course creators, digital marketers, and all of these things, it just opened my eyes. Yeah, because you were able to, you know, now we're we're in this age of COVID where everyone is spending more and more time online. We've already spent a lot of time online, but even more so because of the pandemic. But it sounds like you were able to really see the opportunity to go from, and I would guess, one-to-one to to -to one-to-many and see that as an early opportunity. Because as you said, you're a digital nomad. So you train people all over the world. I am in New Jersey, (laughs) you're in Germany. And yet I have been undergoing this transformation. It's exciting. It's exciting to know that you can have that same connection with someone and guide them through a real evolution, if you will. Yeah. And I mean, when I was starting this three, four years ago, it was so uncommon. So half of my journey was explaining to people how I saw the vision personally, but there was a big hurdle of getting people to understand how I could support them from Bali. Um, People were so used to in-person trainers, in-person coaches. But once I figured out a formula that would work online for many people and getting into this one-to-many model, it was just a matter of time before the world caught up. And I would say COVID is one of my personal biggest blessings because now I have the infrastructure in place and now it's just a matter of scaling and really ramping up because the world is more receptive to it. Absolutely. While you're in unlocking your business, what has been your greatest learning through this process of now being in a digital nomad? I'm sure it's come with, you know, as any business owner, it's triumphs as well as challenges. So maybe take it on both sides. You know, what has been really your biggest triumph and maybe your biggest challenge? My biggest triumph has been just this unlimited opportunity, unlimited potential. I think systemically, as I've said before, and even within corporate, you're constantly put, there's always a cap put on you, cap put on your performance. I'm coming from human resources. So I know all the lingo behind, you know, performance metrics, KPIs, all of these things. There's all these caps been placed on you. But once I started building my own business and recognizing like the power of scale and the power of just removing that cap and having the world as my oyster, literally an abundance in full effect. 
it was a radical mindset shift. It was a paradigm shift for me. In corporate, you're kind of thinking, you know, I want to make six figures. Like there's seven, eight, nine figures and beyond when you're in control of your destiny. And that's probably been the biggest triumph is that radical paradigm shift that I've since come up to while being in control. It's the most fulfilling and incredible experience. At the same time, I guess that's one of the challenges. It's when the world is your oyster, where do you focus? <laughs> you know, where do you, <laughs> how do you get strategic? How do you figure out what the next sequence and step is when you could take one of many? So it's really figuring out owning your truth, focusing and having strategic direction because you're not going to have the boss that's going to lay out your plan for you. You're not going to have the person that's going to tell you what your next steps need to be. You've got to be in control of that yourself. That's been one of my biggest challenges is figuring out strategically how to navigate this abundance that I see and having coaches along the way, being a part of masterminds along the way have really helped me kind of reel it in and hone it in. Other challenges and tri triumphs have been traveling the world. Like I decided I was based in Bali for a year right after Hong Kong when I decided to go on my own. That's just a digital nomad hub. And then after I was like, I don't really want to stay in Bali. Like I want to travel the world. So I spent two years living in a new country every three months. So wow. if, yeah, oh my gosh. or like however long their visa, basically tourist visa would allow me to stay, but just traveling the world and truly working remotely in a time when it was not as popular as it is now was really, really exciting. So that's definitely a triumph. And then again, the challenge is in and around the same thing, like having to navigate new cultures, new languages, new currencies, new ways of living. It, it's been a journey, but the triumphs definitely outweigh the challenges. And that's fantastic. Do you find that now that you've embraced this nomadic life, you've unlocked, I know you were talking about potential, but do you see yourself being even more creative than you had been maybe in your, if you compare it to your pre-nomadic life? Yeah, I've been inspired in ways that I did not know possible. So different cultures inspire me meeting different nomads and people and entrepreneurs around the world. Like the nomads that chill in Colombia are way different than nomads that chill in Bali. It's like you're having a global workplace. Like you have global mm. employees. You have, so yeah, I'm just constantly inspired by people. I've met people making a lot of money doing the most random things and it just <laughs> opens your eyes to what's possible. So yeah, my eyes are open. I'm inspired every day. And like I said, one of my biggest challenges is like staying on track and staying focused <laughs> on what it is I know I need to do because like you wake up one day, you're like, I could start a bottle cap company because you, <laughs> you started a bottle cap company yeah. and made seven figures. So I right. think like you gotta, you gotta stay focused, but it's, it's a constant source of inspiration traveling. How do you stay focused? You know, like you said, when you're meeting different people, you're getting inspiration. I mean, you just meeting digital nomads really put you on that trajectory to start your own business. What maybe tools or resources have you been able to utilize to help you kind of keep the horse blinders on so that you can stay on track and meet your goals and objectives without getting, you know, distracted by like shiny ob object syndrome? It's a really good question. So I've, for the last two years, I've had a coach who's kept me honest. And I now can't see myself without a business coach because I just love the alignment and the focus and keeping me to my goals. Because like I said, as a nomad, especially as an entrepreneurial nomad, you don't have the boss overlooking you. You know, you gotta, so I've just basically found that within a coach. I revisit my goals every morning. So I'm one of those people it's, it's in my system. So every morning I have a system, I have a process. And after I do my morning thing, I write out my goals. The goals usually are set at the beginning of the year. And it's just, and sometimes it changes and I'm definitely fluid where I can be, but to stay focused on what I want, there's a process I do to design my goals. And then there's a process I do to keep really close and centered to my goals. And that's, I literally write out my goals every day. And I have things around my office space, uh, currently in Germany that remind me of my goals. And I'm just always trying to keep myself focused because I am a natural creative, a natural explorer, a natural, ooh, <laughs> this is shiny. Let me try this out. So I always have to make sure I focus on what it is I want to do. I try at least. Yeah. And, it, and I think just having that visual representation, and I talked about that 
in the the last episode of season one of the Blacks at Global podcast, you know, casting your vision and having a visual visual representation often helps you kind of keep things top of mind and not buried in, in the back or the recesses of your mind. But I also hear from you is that having all of these tools at your disposal creates a level of accountability. As I mentioned at the top of our conversation, I'm in your program, your fabulous program. One of the things that I think has really helped me in this transformation, yes, there's a weight loss component of it, but it's really changed my relationship and approach to wellness. And for me, the weight loss is a a secondary benefit. But I think the primary, I think, difference is the accountability. And so I have an accountability partner through your wonderful program. There's the broader community that has, you know, encouraged and we support one another. Can you talk a little bit about your business and then why that is so important when you think about the approach to, like I said, wellness versus maybe anything else? So when I started really getting into the health and wellness space, I knew I didn't want to be a personal trainer. Um, There's nothing wrong with being a personal trainer, but I did not want to work for a big box gym, did not want to own my own gym. I I was really trying to figure out where my unique skill set could be placed within this big industry, multi-billion dollar industry. And then I took a moment and this was on my you know, entrepreneurial journey and just figuring out what my path would look like, I really stepped into my pre-fit self, the person who was 100 pounds over her ideal weight. What was she yearning? What was she, what was she craving? And I needed to know because I was my target customer. So I really tapped into me before this fitness enthusiast, who I was as I was um, navigating this wellness journey. And I realized there were a few things that I just needed. One was community because I always felt so alone on this journey. The second was a realistic plan and approach that didn't feel overwhelming or extreme because anytime I had started extreme or overwhelming things, they would last for two weeks and they wouldn't last any longer. So I started to identify the gaps that were within my process and what I could build to really support the women that were like me. I think it really, really helped that I had gone through the journey and I had gone through the weight loss cycle to understand what women would need. And then since then, once I kind of had a formula, it started with small group coaching, then evolved to retreats, and now it's evolved to a more scalable membership model and programs. Um, But ultimately, it all has the basic of those gaps that I really wanted to fill. It all is surrounded around community. It's all surrounded around a balanced, realistic approach. And as of late, I've added mindset components into it because a lot of people struggling with their wellness journeys aren't focusing on their mental health and having things like meditations and affirmations and a community and safe space where you can ask questions without being judged and really getting deep into this and and figuring out your way in the mental health space has really just helped elevate us to another level. Regardless of what I crazy idea I come up with, it's whether it's a program, a membership, a retreat in Bali or in South Africa, it always has those components. And it's been able to just serve thousands of women, including yourself, which has been awesome that you've had such a great experience with our our work. Yeah. And it's like you are in Germany. Your business partner is in Hawaii. I, you know, like I said, I'm in New Jersey and I feel just as connected, you know, whether I'm doing an affirmation or yoga or some light stretching or I've embraced HIT. (laughs) (laughs) first day I felt like I got hit but then I was like oh wait this does feel good Um, but it's like you keep at it you know I think what I'm also hearing from you know is taking it little by little because like you said you are or were your ideal customer and no it's not like you can ring a bell or blink or click your fingers and overnight you you know get rid of 90 pounds it is taking it day by day, pound by pound, but staying committed to the process, but being mindful of the things like you did so well is identifying, well, what worked, what didn't work, you know, how, what feels authentic to me, because I think for you, the way you show up to the Project You community really resonates because it's on a different vibration. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, you feel supported, even though, you know, you're not sitting (laughs) or standing right next to me, you know, there's always this level of connection. And I think that's what also 
resonates with other members of the community because I feel that with my accountability partner, Esther, who's all the way in Bali. <laughs> right. <laughs> and 13 it, hour time difference. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and that's where I think, again, the international nomadic experience really helped me to see that as somebody who was living in Bali and had family in Ontario and then decided to just jump all over the world as a nomad, borders did not limit me in my connection with people. I had to find ways and that I think also helped to translate in the community that we've built. And one thing I think that also just trumps everything is a positive environment. There's so many times when you're approaching this wellness journey that everything feels so strained and scarce and forced and like it just doesn't feel energetically positive. So one of the things that we bring to our community that I'm happy you brought up is just this light approach to it. You can love yourself, love your body and want to improve it at the same time. And that's really our motto. Like, like you said, this is not an overnight thing. This is going to be a lifestyle. So why not enjoy the process? So I love that you brought that up because that's the community. That's, that's really the core. I think of our community. It's just this energetic high vibration. Let's do the damn thing and have fun while we're doing it. So, so yeah, it's, it's been the best ride ever. Oh my goodness. So while you've been in Germany and I know you're wrapping up your time in Germany, you've kept quite busy in addition to building your fitness empire and wellness empire. Um, you have taken to the language. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about that journey? Because I tip my hat to your girlfriend. <laughs> Girl, like... I thought I knew hard work and entrepreneurial journeys or adventures. It's hard work. I'm not discrediting the work that I've put into, into the business and, and the empire we're building, but learning a language, it's a whole nother playing field. It's a side of the brain that we just don't tap into often enough. And I've never actually personally learned another language outside of in school. We had to take French, maybe I took a Spanish class, but outside of just like the dabbling, like fully immersing myself into a language. So I'm in full intensive German classes every day for four hours. It's basically taken up my morning and I've shifted my work day into the afternoon evening, which works actually better for my clients because I'm six hours ahead of most of them. I've dedicated every morning for the last six months to German, four hours. I'm at the stage now where I'm lightly conversational. Like I can definitely get by in a grocery store or a bakery or something. And, and I can get by and get everything. They don't have to speak English for me to be able to get to where I want to get to. So I look at that as a massive accomplishment. The grammar and the basics I have, it's just now a matter of practicing and continuing to use it. So I just wrapped up the six-month intensive course. It's now Saturday. Saturday Thank you. <laughs> And I'm going to go down to part-time studies, but I'm basically going to keep it going indefinitely until I can speak the language fluently. So it's going to be part-time, less intense, but I'm get, something I'm committing to because Germany will be based one day. So that's another thing that came out of COVID was that I was actually forced to be still, chose Germany to be still in and have decided I'm still going to go do some more nomadic flying and having fun, but Germany will be the place I come back to. Wow. So Germany wow. definitely left an impression on you. So what do you find that you like most about this? And why did Germany really represent an opportunity for a home base? Because as you said, when you were living your nomadic life, you were going to different countries every, you know, two, three months, or whatever the case may be. So what do you think about either, you know, the country or the culture really resonates with your spirit? So my partner is here. As I was nomadically traveling and living my best life, I met a German man in Brazil at Carnival. That was one of my, I stayed in Brazil for three months. That was one of my stints. Met him during Carnival and we had been long distance for about a year and a half until I said, okay, let me try to come in and suss it out. What I love about Germany, because if I didn't love it, I would not be here um, or commit to it long term. I love its location. So it's centrally located within Europe. So I can see myself once I settle and have a family that is in my goal. It's on my goal list one day. I can still see myself having like a mini nomadic life. <laughs> so I can see myself traveling to all the things like Italy's or six hours away by driving. Prague is two hours away. Like I'm centrally located. So I like where Germany is physically located. It's a beautiful country. The people, I know there's all of these like 
stereotypes about Germans, but I felt super welcomed in Germany. I'm in a village, so it kind of feels like a little getaway. I'll always be traveling for work. We'll always be doing retreats. So coming back to this base where it feels like a getaway, it's super serene, super tranquil. People are nice. It's centrally located. It just feels right. Also, I feel really comfortable in a economically developed country, especially after the hit of COVID and the fear of COVID. So historically, pre-COVID, I might have said my dream was to live somewhere else. But now I think I feel a lot of comfort in an economically developed country, just for me personally. So Germany kind of checks everything off the list. I'm not going to lie. Um, there's no country out there really that checks everything off the list, but Germany sort of does. Wow, that is fantastic. Mm. And, a, and a great story. It's like, I met a German man while I was in Brazil at Carnival. <laughs> Like, wait, I have what? to tell you this story another time. It is wild. It is so fun. <laughs> I'm sure our listeners are like, "Ooh, I can't wait till part two. <laughs> yeah, it's that. Uh, that's what I have to say. Like another thing, germ, I'm traveling nomadic and leaving my my very comfort zone within Toronto, Ontario allowed me to explore love. I, I had never envisioned myself moving to Germany with a man. Like, no, no, but my, my, my horizons are broadened. <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty of traveling abroad. And, you know, I, I would imagine when it's, when it's my time in 2023, you know, moving abroad, it just engages all of your senses because you just have to adapt, you know, really draw on everything to understand your environment, to figure out how to move about as you've done so well. And so, yeah, I think when you operate at that level, that heightened awareness, you know, you never know when love might show up. <laughs> right. And I think you just are more open to like, because I mean, realistic, he wasn't living in Brazil. He was traveling to Brazil for carnival. I was in Brazil for three months. It was one of my stints we were able to maintain and build a super dope bond for a year and a half. Historically, if I had been in my normal environment, I would have said, oh, I don't do long distance. There's no way I could communicate with somebody who lives in Germany and I'm traveling all over the world. I would have been so close-minded. Mm. But moving abroad opened my mind. I was like, yeah, let's just chat and see where this goes. And two and a half years later, here I am in wow. Germany. <laughs> yeah, oh, my wild. gosh. Yeah, yeah. You've you've unlocked the potential and you've cracked the code in many respects. You've cracked mm -hmm. the code in terms of weight loss, nomadic life, entrepreneurship, and love. <laughs> yeah. I, when you put it like that, I guess I have. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. So to me, guys, we start to close out. What What is next for you? Because I know, like I said, your time in Germany is coming to an end for now. So what do you see as, you know, the big opportunities that are on the horizon? So I'm personally eager to get back on the road. You know, I've loved this year of stillness. I've embraced it. I've done all the things I need to do, but I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and get moving again. I see in the next few years us settling down, starting a family. So it's one of those things of me trying to kind of get it all out of my system <laughs> before <laughs> I move on to the next stage of life. So I, I honor and respect the virus and I will do all things to be safe, but it's time for me to kind of get back out there. So I'm, right now I'm in research phase. I leave in four weeks. That's another thing. Being nomadic has you very comfortable with being last minute because I don't know where I'm going to live in four weeks, but I will be oh living somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to be, but I'm not going to be here right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to get out. My heart is craving the tropics, so it will be somewhere warm with beach. And there will be a nomadic community because I, I am craving that again. And just, you know, entrepreneurial minds to kind of get me to that next stage. So um, that's what's next. I'm going to hit the road. I'm packing up my suitcase. I live out of a suitcase for about three to four months. So it's a very strategic pack. So that's where I'm going to be investing a lot of my time over the next four weeks. And then also just deciding where to. My top options are Costa Rica, Mexico, Bali, and I'm looking into the Caribbean a bit more like Bahamas and, and somewhere, somewhere in the Caribbean I'm also looking into. So I will be going somewhere. Wow. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to keep up with your travels and you know, keep up with obviously within our Project U community, but also on Instagram to kind of see where you end up next. And hopefully, you know, maybe I can finally, uh, especially if it's something like Costa Rica or Bali, <laughs> finally end the distance between us and we can be face yeah, to face. that would be amazing. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> well, awesome. Tamika, thank you so much for being a guest today on the Blacks of Global podcast. This was really a lot of fun. And like I said, I will sing your praises six different ways to Sunday. Aww. You've really been an inspiration in many ways. And I hope everyone listening is equally, if not more so, inspired by your incredible story. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And yeah, I just, if I could leave any words of advice for anybody is just do it. Whatever is on your heart, forget the limitations, just do it because it is so worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to the Black Sleep Global Podcast. For more information on today's episode, be sure to visit our website at blacksleepglobal.com. Has this episode left you feeling inspired to begin your journey, but not quite sure where to start? Download our free guide with the top five questions you need to ask before planning your Black Sleep. You can find that under the resources tab of our website. Remember, it's not only possible to live out your dreams unbothered and in full color, it is your birthright.